So welcome to another video collaboration of The Shield Dude in the Couch. Uh, I have my cousin, Tanuki Ninja, and I have Bijo Dr. Cybertron, or uh, other called Joel. And today we're going to tackle the Batman. So hey, guys, how are you guys? Doing good, man. Uh, great movie. Uh, I can't wait to discuss it. Uh, so for people who are watching this video, we're going to have spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie, log off, go see it. And if you want to see it, we have fucking spoilers for you. So you get uh, the spoilers. Bad. You get the spoilers. You, bad. you have to go to watch the movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. And oh, I just want to say right off the bat, do not wait to see it in HBO Max. Go see it in a fucking movie theater because this is a movie that is meant to be on the big fucking screen. And I heard a lot of people complaining, oh, it's too dark. Oh, I can't see. It's fucking Batman. You know, he lives in the fucking dark. <laughs> I just love I just love uh, all those people. I got to tell you. Yeah. Like, hey, like hey. if you want to see like Batman in the light, go see Adam West. But come on, Batman is supposed to be dark and gritty. And I, I want to get started uh, talking about this movie. I think that this movie is great. Uh, I only saw it once and I need to see it again, you know, to absorb uh, like little things. But when I was seeing it in the movie theater, I, uh, since I was alone, no one was bothering me. I like tried to kept an eye on all the details. I think that the thing that I like most about this movie that's better from the most Batman movies is Gotham itself. I think that is the best Gotham representation that we have gotten, except on maybe the video games for Batman, Arkham City, and Asylum. Because to me, when I was watching the movie, I'm like, that looks like the video games. Like, that's the true Gotham. Like, it felt like a grimy, shitty city, like really crime. And you didn't feel like you, like when, for example, I love The Dark Knight. But when you're seeing it, you know it's Chicago. Like, yeah. you're like, that's not Gotham. That's very that's true. That's very true about the Dark Knight. It's the only thing that is kind of like eh about it. But yeah, that is... did you like, but with this movie, like you get the like Gotham, like the city for me in itself, it's like a character. Like it, this was to me also the the movie of Batman that had the best world building, uh, built because you really felt like you were in Gotham. I don't know about you guys, but that's what I felt. Like to me, the the best thing about the movie is Gotham itself. Yeah, the part after they, uh, I think it was the the mayor giving the discourse or the, or the chief of police that everybody leaves and you see that huge uh, it, Times Square lookalike, but it's like much bigger, much darker and so, so impressive. You know, when I saw that and he's just uh, running with his bike from one end to the other, I was like, wow, finally. <laughs> you know? Yeah, because... You can see like the the papers on the street. It's filthy. Everything. It's dirty. And I, when I was watching the movie, I was thinking like, why the fuck does he want to save this place? Like it's <laughs> unsavable. Yeah, I don't know what you guys think. What What about you, Joel? What What do you What do you What are your thoughts? What are my thoughts about the movie? I found the movie amazing. I really love the movie. It actually um, surpassed my expectations in terms of the kind of the, of the stage uh, on, on the character, how it was developed. Um, I mean, I don't know if I'm making myself clear. We're talking about a year, a year two Batman. We're mm -hmm. talking uh, a Batman still in development uh, as, a, as a character, as a persona, uh, also with the issues of Bruce Wayne had uh, at that moment in his life. I think that um, in the past, Robert Pattinson, Robert Pattinson's portrayal actually amazed me a lot. It actually surprised me a lot. And I'm extremely satisfied what the whole movie per se, um, you know, the, 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 the colors, uh, I have a little bit of a complaint with the photography, but in some, in, in some instances it's justified. Uh, but uh, you know the acting performances, uh, Robert Pattinson, so uh, uh, Zoe Kravitz. Uh, my goodness, the whole cast was amazing. Was so amazing. Yeah, even like the 
secondary characters that were there like for just a little bit uh, were truly amazing. Uh, and this time for this video, I have visual aids. So uh, I think we should start by talking about the fucking Riddler. Uh, the Riddler was, uh, he was creepy. Uh, to me, he, he Paul Dano played that character very well. Uh, he, I found it creepy because uh, where I used to live in Puerto Rico, one of my neighbors looked like him. So I sent him a message like, hey, congrats on the new Batman movie. And he's like, what the fuck? And I sent him the picture. He's like, oh, he kind of looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that uh, to me, he, uh, let's see, this is, oh, this is the Riddler. I think this is in the beginning scenes of the movie uh, yeah. where he's in the house of the 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 person who's running uh, to be a mayor and yeah. I, I something i loved about i loved about that uh, that scene is in the background you can see like the newspaper where it says about you know when they maroni that they had the bust and you know uh, they give you small details that are very important in the movie and uh, at the beginning of the movie when you know, you get the perspective of the Riddler looking at him from the house. At first, I thought it was Batman when I was watching the movie. But then when he was like, he had that like weird breathing, like, oh, oh and like very porno kind of like it's <laughs> kind of sounds. <laughs> and when you first see him, it's it's incredible because, you know, you I'm used to I'm so used to like the Riddler with the tight uh, skin pants and kind of like silly and like super green but I really when this Riddler to me and obviously uh, some spoilers here it's like a mixture of Zodiac meets the bad guy from Seven I totally agree you know you can you can sense in him that he's getting excited before he pulls off a crime and it's it's so creepy this 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 Riddler that Paul Dano brought you know, to the screen is so creepy and so nasty, man. You know, <laughs> it, 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 the whole time where he's wearing the mask is is like a very menacing character, and and I think he pulled it off really well. Actually, yeah. when I saw when I saw the, when, when I saw a Paul Dano uh, oh. from the Riddler with that gimp mask, because what he has is a is a gimp mask. How how creepy can he be? Just for it, starters. And you know what's also awesome? They pulled off, and Joel's going to agree to this, what they do a lot in the comics with the glasses. They always show them white. They never show a reflection. So they manage to capture that. You don't see the, the villain's eyes when they have glasses in the comics. You just see, like, white. And it, yeah. it's, it, they managed to capture that, and I was just blown away. I was like, wow, this is intense. And I, I see that, uh, that they actually pushed the envelope uh, in terms of portraying uh, uh, this Riddler this way. I think that uh, uh, the Paul Dano uh, in his performance, uh, it was superb, had a great presence, had a great uh, uh, tone on the, on the voice and all the uh, this, uh, distinct tones that was he was applying to portray the character. I'm talking in... Uh, I'm talking in the in, in the in the actor's perspective, you know, and I think that uh, Paul Dano. I think this movie can be considered his best uh, his best movie ever in his, in his young career as a movie actor uh, in the United States. Yeah, very, no, he, very he was impressive. very convincing, and mm -hmm. uh, it also it also remind me of the bad guy in Eight Millimeter and. Also, the thing when I was watching the beginning of the movie, I'm like, uh, this is definitely not a movie for kids. It's, <laughs> I think this is the, the most hardcore Batman movie ever. And that lead me, I want to talk. The second thing I want to say, discuss about this movie that was really great is Batman in itself. I think this is the best detective Batman movie that we have gotten on screen. Like, because in the other movies, like he, he does some detective stuff in the Christopher Nolan, like he's got a lot of help. But in this one, uh, you get to see like his detective side a lot and working with uh, 
com uh, commissioner or Gordon, who was Jeffrey Gordon. Wright, was awesome too, as Commissioner yeah. Gordon. And I know that a lot of people, when it was coming out, they were complaining because he was in Twilight, and they were calling him the emo Batman. So I have a, a slide here, so we can, <laughs> folks. <laughs> this is the emo Batman. So yeah, he's got that hot topic look. Yeah, you, you it's like you know the guy from My Chemical Romance could have been Batman, but. Uh, actually, I didn't think he was an emo Batman. I thought that he was like very, he, he was a very aggressive Batman. I thought he was more of an emo Bruce Wayne. <laughs> if oh, you yeah, think... actually. No, go ahead, Joel. No, the thing is that, yes, an, an emo Bruce Wayne. But again, we're talking about Batman year two. We're talking mm -hmm. about, we're talking about Bruce Wayne still dealing with, with his demons because his real self is the Batman. And he's this guy, as we already learned throughout the whole history of Batman, he's, he's this guy, he's Bruce Wayne playboy. But in this stage of, of how the character has been developed, he's still dealing with his demons, you know, the, the conflict that he has, losing his parents, um, trying to, to get involved in, what is Gotham City is all about at that moment in history, um, how he's trying to adapt, but also trying to, you know, to, to take away that pain and that desire for vengeance. And as we can see at the end of the movie, how he understands, okay, I'm like this, but hey, what I've been doing all, uh, all this time, hey, the, then the I have part to with the lady, the, part the with other the way lady. around. Mm -hmm. that, exactly, and the th and the thing is, uh, how a character, how a complete round Aristotelian character uh, should be. You know, you start being like this, you end up being a completely different person. Mm -hmm. And uh, Robert Pattinson actually uh, achieved that amazingly. I have to. Tell. Yeah, I totally agree. And yeah. going back to the to the 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 makeup in the eyes, this is the first time. Look at all the other Batman movies where they take off his mask, and he's actually has the dark makeup in the eyes. If you go back to uh, Michael Keaton, okay, you would see the makeup under the eye hole. But when they would take off the mask, he didn't have it. He was his no, face was all. clean. If you go back to the Nolan movies, you would see the black makeup under the eye holes. And when yeah. they would take off the mask from, from Christian Bale, he wouldn't have it. So this I is think the first time. Especially in Batman Begins, I think. Yeah. I, in, in the first one that they did look a lot but yeah i just found funny that everyone's like everyone was complaining before the movie it's like oh it's gonna suck like oh he was in twilight he's been in so many great movies after that and i'm like come on give the guy a break like uh i really uh thought that he was an amazing batman and it was a it was like a more like in your face batman more yeah. reckless because it's year two And uh, and you felt like he he could die at any moment because like that Gotham City like that scene where where he first appears like uh, when there's uh, there's these people in the subway and they're roughing up people mm -hmm. and then they go out and they had like the clown faces I felt like they were like the Joker Joker's man but uh, you have to remember that the movie starts in Halloween yeah uh, and when he you hear the footsteps of him coming and then you see the Batman and. I think the fight scenes in this movie felt very violent, very, very violent. violent. And I mean, it was uh, so, so good, you know, and quite graphic. I got to tell. Yeah. By the way, talking about Halloween, I have to point out. Don't you guys notice that part of the storyline to beat in pieces from other storylines that we all read in the comic books or in the graphic novels, for example, yes, a couple sir. of elements that were taken out from Batman the Long Halloween. Mm -hmm. Don't you notice that? There you go. Pablo has There it. Go. There you go, Pablo. <laughs> you go. Show, show it, Pablo. Talk about yeah, it. It's, uh, it's a little blurry, but yeah, that's, that's uh, one of the best detective-esque stories 
as far as Batman goes because they they handle it's everything not, the, on, the effect a, of on a case. The background doesn't, it's not helping to mm. they handle the, everything uh, on a case media. by case. Look, there it is. You can there see there it. you can see. There it is. Long Halloween. Yes. Awesome. Yes, and it, it's by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. If anybody wants to look it up. Yeah, no, I think I thought that was great, and and obviously the Batman. And now I wanna. I want to talk a little bit about the penguin because I, I thought the penguin was pretty, you know, first when I'm calling Farrell, uh, let me know when everyone, uh, that's too big. Yeah, that's the penguin right there. Uh, the makeup for him was like, like you could barely tell that that was calling Farrell. I, Out of I, the park. Out of yeah, the park. I think it's the best it's penguin that, that we've had in a movie. Like, I'm sorry, Danny DeVito. Uh, Danny DeVito was like a, he was like a grotesque monster, but this was like, it, this was more like the more realistic, like the, more realistic, you know? more like the Burgess Meredith like uh, type of penguin, only not as campy. Uh, but it had that look. It had that like, uh, yeah, that's the penguin I remember. He it because in in that Batman. Um, the Tim Burton one, they made it seem like he was a mutant or something like that. Yeah, it's form. very stylized, you know, and it's, it's, they always, Tim Burton always had like a weird, uncanny origins, you know. Yeah. It's, this is way more realistic. I mean, you could, you could even go back to uh, uh, mafia movies. Yeah. And compare, compare this guy to somebody, you know, like in the Corleones, you know, and he has, he has that heavy, uh, either Boston or, or New Yorkish accent when when he spoke in the movie, and uh, he his appearance was always very menacing. Oh yeah, so I, I really enjoyed it. And, and he and, has, in my opinion, one of the best scenes in the movie, and probably one of the best car chases. Yeah, things he goes in a Batman. Him. Yeah, when incredible. when Batman goes after him, uh, I'm I'm telling you that that chasing was amazing. Uh, uh, I'm not. I'm not that fond of the Batmobile that they use in this movie because it looked more like a muscle car. It didn't feel like you know, like a Batmobile. It was cool, but uh, uh, but you know, in the Christopher Nolan's, they had like a freaking tank for a yeah. for a Batmobile. But this was a car. But I thought that cars chase uh, sequence was so. And remember, good. remember, this is year two, so correct. You, you kind of have to give him more time until he gives he gets into the high tech stuff. He did have some very impressive things, you know, like uh, what was it he used in the beginning? I forget, but it was something he had. He pulled out something, and I was like, oh well, that's pretty. That's pretty high tech. But then he his car is still not up there, you know, and his suit is kind of like halfway there. Are because you talking about the part where he jumps and he paraglides? No. He he kind of took like a like a thing out that was kind of like a phone and it could recognize stuff on the first case and he oh. recorded everything. Oh, oh, he had something, the, remember? The optical, he, the optical. He put like a contact lens in the eye. Yeah, and that, that was like way up there and then his suit, you know, is like half and <clears> half because the mask is knitted, knitted like a football and yeah. you could see it. And the rest is like very high tech armor. And he can he could also take his like his bat logo and his take it off. From, yeah, he better yeah, he had that. He had so that. There, there was some stuff that was like way up there, and then other stuff that was like in the in 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 the in the way, you know. Yeah. So it was interesting to see. Yeah. Not no, not everything cool. highly upgraded, but no, know. not everything highly upgraded, but mm -hmm. Uh, now I, I would like to talk about I think one of the highlights in the movie for me and very surprised by her role was Zoe Kravitz as uh, Selena Kyle in Catwoman. I'm sorry, in the Christopher Nolan movie, I thought Anne Hathaway sucked. I'm I'm <laughs> gonna say it. Anne Hathaway as Catwoman was terrible. Uh, she's way up there with Halle Berry <laughs> in that Catwoman like mistake. But uh, I think Zoe Kravitz, uh, to me, I love Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman, but that's more like ca caricature. This, yeah. this, this Catwoman was very believable. And, you know, she, she was very good in this movie. I, I want to show... Uh, let me know. You want to show a picture 
uh, of, of the uh, Zoe Kravitz as a cat woman. Yes, I'm trying to. Away, I can't see it. It says nothing I to show. It yet, but no, so it, it, will, it, will be, it will be showing soon. But meanwhile, mm -hmm. you, you take that image to the screen. I just want to point out that Zoe Kravitz, even her petite size, let me tell you something, she looked ravishing. Amazing. 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 Very, she very had a, attractive. A very strong presence. Yeah. How that Selena Kyle was uh, actually uh, uh, mingling among the. Uh, I'm having trouble getting the their picture. No, no, no. I, I hope that it come eventually, but anyway. It's okay. Um, the thing is, the thing is that uh, um, Zoe Kravitz, my gosh, my gosh, she looks so ravishing, so sexy, very strong, very yeah, very sure mm -hmm. uh, of 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 her develop of her of her de uh, uh, development and delivery. Uh, Selena Kyle, uh, she was showing a Selena Kyle that we could observe in maybe in the uh, recent series uh, Batman and Catwoman by DC Black, yeah. which, by the way, the whole storyline is amazing. Yeah, the, the... I actually strongly suggest you read that, go to your, com to your local comic book store, buy it, you're, and enjoy You're it. talking about the, the Selena Kyle variant that, 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 that he marries, right? The, the... Yes, correct, correct. Yes, I totally agree. Uh, you know, she has that classy, but she also uh, can represent like coming from a lot of hardship and, mm -hmm. and that makes her stronger even, you know, and, and in the movie, the part where they presented her as doing the classic Steve stuff, trying to break into the vault. I just loved that, man. That was so good. It's you know, it's, her. It, it's yeah. Selena Kyle in essence. Selena Kyle in essence. And also... I have to point out as well. Her okay, finally. There, there she is. There she is. There she finally. Is. I'm like, damn you, technology. <laughs> <laughs> By hey, the way, Pablo right now we're looks so back. Pablo looks so uh, dark. Are you, are you trying to impersonate the look of the movie? I am vengeance. <laughs> So yeah, no, I I loved it that she had like the simple hoodie, but uh, she she was very sexy also as mm -hmm. Catwoman. Uh, uh, even though uh, I still think that the best case for Catwoman and Batman was in that Tim Burton one, uh, but yeah, I, I I liked her because she was very believable uh, as her character, and her she had a lot of physicality to the role and and. Uh, I, I really think she was one of the standouts in the in the movie for me as a scary mm -hmm. very grounded character and she did not feel like a support supporting role she not felt at all. like a like a hard lead you know oh, I yes. really really enjoyed the performance yeah and I think her and Robert Pattison have some great uh on move uh, on set chemistry, chemistry like yes yes indeed I thought so. Well, let me uh, tell you, let me, let me point out, and this actually is a little bit of DC gossip that has been discussed in previous uh, <laughs> public, publications through uh, social media and so on. But they actually confirmed it. Exclusive, no lo tiene. Exclusive, nobody has it. <laughs> they dated or something? Uh, you, know, you, you ever heard, my friends, or you read the, uh, uh, the piece that uh, basically, the 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 director of the movie was actually shouting and, and angry. Uh, by the way, against uh, Robert Pattinson and and Zoe Kravitz because uh, it's they told them not they today. Catch them! They, they catch them! They catch them both actually having sex <laughs> over the battle. Over the, where where did they catch them? They catch them having sex over the Batmobile. So that's that's um, very uh, bad, man of him. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Very Bruce oh, Wayne. Yes. Very is, Bruce Wayne. Is, <laughs> very Bruce Wayne. The thing is that actually. Is that how he got COVID? Actually, <laughs> oh, yeah, oh my actually, God. Yes, actually, it was in the middle of the pandemic. The thing is that they apparently had sex, you know, between takes and so on. So uh, they got this fling and then, okay, well, let, let's make it, uh, let's make it over the Batmobile, you know. <laughs> Just for the thrill. That's funny, but come and on. Richard was enraged. They were enraged against them because they were actually 
you know, uh, 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 damaging the Batmobile. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, he was uh, like, I'm vengeance. You know, yeah. Vengeance <laughs> in there. <laughs> and they go, what the hell are you doing? You're damaging the Batmobile. Well, now you can now I can tell why they had such great chemistry. But come on, if if you're him and her, and I would have totally done it too. <laughs> I'm like, ah. well, well hey, in, time, in times say, of COVID, I, right? I, in times of COVID. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. You know, but he got to. to you, you have he to really by your urges. Yeah, and he yeah. really got to know his co-star. You know. That's yeah. a that's a great way to get to know your co-star when you oh, yeah. when you Deep share. Down inside. Deep down inside, it's like, do you want to see my battle rack? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to ride my bat pole? My bat. Oh my god! <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, I, I, I. But you know, all jokes aside, uh, she was great, and you know, I, I'm. I, a I took that's I a took a plan. yeah. For, and for I took HBO pictures Magic. of everyone, and I forgot to to take a picture of Robert Pattinson f fully dressed as the Batman. <laughs> what did you get? A Twilight <laughs> picture? I just got that. That <laughs> no, no, I got that picture next to the guy from my Chemical Romance too, because of the emo talk. <laughs> so now let's get back to the plot and spoilers for everyone. So uh, when the the movie, you know, it it has that it has a a few storylines. It has the Selena Kyle storyline that she's looking for her friend, that it's her roommate, and uh, the Maroni has her, and she gets killed. And obviously, there's the story with the penguin is that they think that he is the one that ratted out Marconi, but it turns out that he wasn't. And then there's obviously the whole the Riddler who's in the who's he's in the whole movie but he's in bits he's yeah. almost a lot of times on the phone like there's that uh, there's that great uh ransom scene where he gets one of the I think a lawyer the district attorney of Gotham and he has them with the the saw contraction on the where when they're on the on the church and I thought that scene was amazing and it, I thought of Saw in that movie because it, yeah, that's another combination. He was like a jig. He had those jigsaw things. He had the the riddles and that and, scene. And, and seven too. I was reminded seven. of seven a lot. Especially when you when go, they when they raided there. his house and they found yeah. the, the notebooks. I'm like, I've seen this before yeah. uh, in seven, but it was very, very tastefully made. You know, it wasn't a yeah. copy paste. They, yeah, he, I they, so Matt Reeves, I thought that took bits and inspirations and obviously... Uh, the, even though the Riddler is, he doesn't appear this much in this movie. He's like lurking in the background, but yeah. when he does, like he he completely takes over the pick the movie. And uh, my favorite scenes with the Riddler is I like when he gets caught and you finally see him and and you know he 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 looks like a destroyed, dork, destroyed, <laughs> destroyed. Yeah, without his his hood and thing, he looks like a normal guy. And when they take him. I thought that the scene that they had on the Arkham Asylum, I really reminded me of the scene they had, The Dark Knight Rises, when Batman is in a, he's talking to the Joker. So mm -hmm. Kind of a, like a similar type of scene, but different situation because in, in that one, the Joker was in total control. Uh, but in this one, it's it's like when the Paul Danos is explaining that Batman and him are like the same person because he was helping him when he brought uh, Maroni into the light right. and he got to shoot him because basically uh, it's a revenge story for the Riddler because uh, another spoiler for everyone that hasn't seen it. Uh, in this movie, Bruce, uh, the Bruce Wayne's parents weren't that nice. Uh, Bruce, they, yeah. they were not a, uh, how do you how do you call it a uh, like squeaky clean squeaky people. clean yeah you at know? least we didn't get to see them die again right they they weren't squeaky clean each of them had like their own darkness you know and and uh what was it bruce bruce father had a uh, uh, ha had contact with the mafia to try and you know get some votes ahead and win the elections as a mayor right mm -hmm. and and then his his mother Martha had had been crazy, and yeah. uh, you know they were trying to sweep it under the rug, so so nobody would know and and keep the image of you know the the, the Waynes 
the wains, the mentors, the powerful people of the city. So, But you also, know, they were not squeaky clean and they had their issues. And I, I think that finally brings uh, more realness into the light as well, because there's so many rich people that have stuff to hide. You know, they have demons too. It's not like, you know, everybody's uh, everybody has their own supreme and like oh, almighty, you know. Everybody yeah. grabs them by the pussy. Oh. <laughs> Especially Pattinson. <laughs> I, should, I should also point out, uh, talking about Martha, Martha Wayne, uh, Bruce's mother, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I understood also that on the movie, besides Martha being crazy, she, her, I can uh, infer that her maiden name was a Martha Arkham, Yeah. yeah, I think they, they, they said they, 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 yeah. they mentioned that. They, they they mentioned that. They, they and that's why that I want to go to see it again a second time because I sort of like heard but yes. was, wasn't sure now that you confirm it. Yeah. You yeah. know, there's oh, so yeah, many, because... so many details. And this is a long ass movie. You know, it's yeah. almost a three hour movie. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's another complaint that people said it's too long. But you but know so what? So are the Nolan films. Yeah, you know? they were pretty long too. And yeah. you know right. what? They took time to explain shit, right. you know. Uh, right. The only thing I, I wasn't, uh, I thought Alfred was okay, but it, he wasn't my favorite Alfred. I, I don't know. Every time I saw him, I know he's Andy Serkis. I just thought of Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually, I had to, I had to defer. I under, I, I found uh, Andy Serkis as a, as Alfred. I, I like him. Not strong, enough screen strong, time, strong. you know. I'm yeah, he didn't have enough screen time. He, deserved, he actually deserved more screen time. Yeah, I had I had to agree. Um, and the circus uh, was portraying a very solid, uh, very uh, sure of himself, Alfred, aware of what mental and emotional process was Bruce Wayne going through, you know, and trying to empathize with him, but also trying to you know uh, help him focus or even discipline him. Uh, in, in some instances, you know, uh, yeah, he did get a chance emotionally with the loss of her parents. Now, trying to, you know, uh, trying to get him out of that depression, but also, mm -hmm. uh, he obviously he's the accomplice on the whole uh, Batman persona thing, but but he tries to, to be that anchor, uh, to to you know, to the real to the real world and who. Bruce Wayne is. So I really think that uh, that Alfred, Andy Serkis Alfred, deserved way much more time on screen. But yeah. also, but also, I always, I love the vulnerability of that Alfred in the movie. You know, that although you're Alfred Pennyworth, you had this military background, you were a war medic, and so on, as we know. Uh, his backstory. The thing is that uh, he's not, you know, uh, out of the danger of any right. of, of, of any of the Batman foes. You know, so in the case of the Riddler, which I can say is one of the few uh, characters, uh, one of the members of the Rogue Gallery in in in, in Batman that actually uh, deciphers uh, the secret identity. You know, uh, which actually uh, uh, endangers what is Batman and Bruce Wayne and, yeah. his, and the Batman family. Surrounding. Yeah, at, at one point he even felt uh, that Riddler knew he was Bruce. He looks, oh, yes. at, uh, he looks at, the, the, at Gordon and tells him, uh, I think it's time for the end of the Batman. Like yeah, I, I, I think they grabbed me by the balls. Pretty much is what he was telling Gordon. Like, I think the Riddler knows, you know? Yeah. So that that was pretty impressive. Yeah. So I think we're running. Um, there's something say that it's running almost out of time. So let's try to talk about the the ending of the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, the ending of the movie was pretty interesting. You know, uh, Riddler gets caught, but he had a master plan, and his master plan was that on the night of uh, 
the new mayor was going to give like a speech. He blows up the water tanks and floods the city and has like a, a lot of like followers. And I thought that they did that great. Like he did, they did like a, he had that Instagram and he had the followers. And I'm like, that's, that's so spot on of what stuff that happens now in society yeah. that, that we have, you know, we find uh, people follow a lot of people on Instagram that they're like influencers and they're deep shits that haven't done anything. Yeah. So I thought that that was really interesting put put in there in the movie and i thought that was a great uh climax to the ending because any uh you uh, like anyone could have been the riddler at that time they yeah. had he had all those people dressed up and they're shooting at people and they're trying to kill the mayor and and he almost won and he, he almost, almost won. won you he know he won. he managed to uh, succeed in exposing all these powerful men that Correct. were apparently squeaky clean you know, and all their lies. And then that's what uh, got the people's uh, morale so high, you know, and they were rooting for him instead of, say, the police or Batman, because they thought, oh, this guy's going to expose everybody now. All the shit in Gotham. But mm -hmm. they didn't realize that he also wanted to kill everybody in, in Gotham, you know. So it, it's, uh, it's, it's a really nice uh, conflict. Yeah, and that part, like, like you almost felt like Batman was gonna die, like, like he was, uh, it, it, like it's, it's. I thought it was very awesomely uh, shot, and you know, with the water things, I also meant that the director was doing like a metaphor for Katrina, or you know, remember something that happened in real yeah. life. I think he was inspired by that. Uh, yeah. Obviously, I'm not sure if it's the deal, but I thought of.